Hi there, and welcome to the Cotswold Explorer. I'm Robin Shuckborough, and we are exploring the beautiful region of the Cotswolds in southwest England, following in the trail of Herbert Evans, who cycled around this region and wrote about his experiences in this wonderful book, The Highways and Byways in Oxford and the Cotswolds, published in 1905, 114 years ago. We've arrived in the town of Whitney, where, um, which is close to where I live in Bantam. This is a remarkable town. It's extremely beautiful. Well, there's a ch beautiful church we're going to tell you a bit about in a little while. It's important because whilst it was, as you can look around you, you can see uh, a wonderful ancient Cotswold village, it grew at the time when the wool trade was changing. The market for raw wool, which had been such a fantastic source of income for all those lovely villages in the Cotswolds that we've seen already, um, was dying slightly, and the broad loom had been invented. And Whitney became famous for making blankets. And it still is famous for making blankets, although actually the blanket factory closed a while ago now. Uh, we're going to show you around. It's become a busy, very successful little town, this even after the demise of the blanket business. Everybody uses duvets these days. Um, partly because of some very enlightened local government. There's free parking here, which has made a huge difference to the way people visit. And we love this town. It's an extremely busy and pretty place, full of great businesses. Let's show you around. The Church of St. Mary's Whitney, standing proud at the top of the green, with its soaring spire pointing to heaven, bringing the worshipper nearer to God, was certainly built on the site of a much earlier Saxon church. Dr. J. A. Giles, a 19th century historian of the area from whom I pinch all kinds of information, writes of St. Mary's, the parish church of Whitney is a most spacious building situated at the southern extremity of the town and is seen with great advantage from the church green. It forms also a most elegant object when seen from neighbouring hills in the general view of the town. The excellent pamphlet available to buy inside this lovely church will tell you that in 1044, Edward the Confessor granted Alvin, Bishop of Winchester, a large parcel of land on the edge of the royal forest of Witchwood and close to his own palace at Woodstock. Whitney and its small Saxon village church was part of that gift. Alfine's successors made Whitney their home and helped to build the prosperous wool town Whitney was to become. The old parsonage, just west of the church itself, was built in 1723 by Dr. Robert Friend, who had been rector of St. Mary's from 1711 to 1739. He said he built it in compensation for the disadvantages caused by his continued non-residence. Now it's part of Henry Box School next door. The market in Whitney was always situated on the green in front of the church, and this small covered market building was built to allow traders to sell perishables like meat and butter in all weathers. These days, Whitney is a bustling town with lots of independent shops, cafes, pubs and restaurants. It has taken a big hit in this dreadful pandemic, but Whitney people are a resilient lot and I certainly wouldn't bet against them recovering well in 2021. Success of a town or village like Whitney lies in a combination of entrepreneurial spirit and enlightened and supportive local government. Whitney's record in this endeavour is excellent to date, and I'm sure that will continue. On the invention of the broad loom, Whitney's raw wool business gave way to the manufacturing of blankets. While many of the Cotswold villages were in decline, Whitney blossomed and factories were built to produce the famous Whitney blankets. This accounts for the huge difference in feel between this busy town and the quieter, perhaps more peaceful towns and villages we've visited to date. When duvets replaced the blanket in our affections, the factories were closed and there was a plan to demolish them, but fortunately 
they were saved by an excellent conversion into flats and houses. Just a few miles west of Whitney, on the banks of the river Windrush, is the small hamlet of Minster Lovell. Near the church, you can find Minster Lovell Hall, the ruins of a 15th century manor house once belonging to the Lovell family. And there's a medieval dovecote nearby, much better preserved. The ruins are incredibly atmospheric and well worth a visit. There's a legend that in 1708, the skeletal remains of Lord Lovell were discovered in a secret chamber in the manor house. Lord Lovell had fought in the Battle of Stoke in 1487 and had been seen escaping from the battle but was never heard of again. It's supposed that he'd hidden himself there and then died of starvation. It would be easy, given the spectacular nature of the ruins, to pass by the Church of St Kenelm, hard by on the northern edge of the hall. This would be a mistake. This lovely church has a great deal to see, including some lovely vaulting in the ceiling, some excellent effigies of the Lovell family, a lovely 15th century font, and original 15th century seating in the nave. Fragments of medieval glass have been gathered in several of the windows, and the north nave window has glass depicting St Dominic, and a likeness of St Lucy is set in the south choir window. Just on the eastern edge of Whitney is the ancient manor and farm of Coggs. The history of this building is long and fascinating. It's one of the very best preserved examples of medieval farming in the country. The Farm Museum has been a favourite of my children and grandchildren for decades, and not surprisingly, it was used extensively in the filming of the Downton Abbey television series. There is livestock to see, as well as a great collection of old farming artefacts. The cafe is great as well. It's a kind of Cotswold must, this place, despite, of course, Whitney being considered by many as being outside the Cotswold itself. As we've said many times, we take flexible views of the Cotswold boundaries. As is clear from the sky, Whitney is still an expanding settlement, changing and developing all the time, increasingly becoming a kind of suburb of Oxford. In many places this might be something rather to dread, but I'm not sure that it isn't exactly what is needed for this town. If the transport links can keep up with this exceptionally dynamic place, then I think all bodes very well for the future. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it and Ross and I are now working hard on finding ways we can talk about our lovely Cotswolds despite the restrictions we're all under. Keep in touch please and we'll see you again very soon. <laughs>